This is an engine control quadrant assembly for a Beach B55. My job is to get all of this to work with flight sim. I'm gonna start out by taking this cable assembly right here, and instead of having this cable assembly, I'm going to have a simple drive belt from the wheel through the body to the indicator right here. This cable is very windy and it'll easily <laughs> just spring out into curls. Ding dong, the witch is dead. All right, we'll take this cable and we'll keep it in a little bag for the future. The string is a messy thing. So the string was really hard to tap into to get the potentiometer output. There was that kind of sprocket. I could have bought aircraft grade chain and uh, tapped off of that, but I would have had to build a whole structure behind the throttle and that would have kind of messed with things uh, a bit. The one thing I do miss about the string is its hard limits. The string, because it physically wrapped around the hub uh, five times, it stopped. With my pulley system, the stops aren't inherently there. I have to add them and I'm adding them through my idling belt. Uh, there's a little thing. But that's, just, that's for later, that's for later. I'm spoiling things. Now we have this wheel right here and I can attach a 3D printed belt loop bracket to here and then I can also uh, make some ridges and either glue them on or uh, fit them on to this indicator piece right here. I think it's a coincidence of luck and genius that the GT2 belt, the six millimeter belt, fit into the timing wheel. Uh, it's just perfectly. It slots in, it holds tension, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't lose its sync. It's really a match made in heaven. We have this mechanism right here. It gets routed through here all the way through our tensioner to the face itself. Now when we ro rotate this, the idea is that it all rotates together. Of course I haven't tensioned it yet, so I'm relying on my fingers, but the idea is that you don't have to rely on your fingers, you rely on the potentiometer. I'm either going to purchase a sprocket and then mill it out, or uh, 3D print my own. Um, I just need to be very careful to make sure that these teeth work well. I've also been given permission to drill out wherever I need to that's uh, not visible, so I can expand these holes just ever so slightly so that it accommodates this mechanism right here. Big thing we want to avoid is any slippage because if there's any slippage right here, the wheel is moving but the belt isn't, then our indication will be messed up here. It's really important that this potentiometer doesn't slip anywhere. We should put a like wet floor sign out. No slipping. Uh, it's important that it doesn't slip around the shaft itself, so we need to tighten down the pulleys. Um, and it's also important that the pulley doesn't slip on the timing belt. So those are the two areas we need to mitigate. I'm not so worried about slippage on this gear. You need a lot of force to mess with the calibration. This has to do with the shape of the belt and the way the belt is fitting into that piece, which is really lucky. I don't have to 3D print a custom jig to disassemble this entire side of the panel. Um, it works really nicely. One idea I have right here is to basically take this bit of rubber and then adhesive it onto this sprocket right here, and then it'll catch on the teeth of the rubber right here. This, my friend, is what I call a bad idea. It's one that doesn't work. I feel like it's really important to share my bad ideas, as well as my good ideas, uh, kind of to show you where I'm coming at, um, and also why they didn't work, because I feel like a lot of uh, learning and growth comes from these bad ideas. I didn't go too far with this, I kind of did some preliminary tests and kind of scrapped it. The main reason this is a bad idea is because of the way the world works. If you imagine having a pool noodle, if you bend it down, the bottom compresses and the top stretches, uh, and the top stretching of our timing belt makes the teeth spread out to more than they should be. They should be a certain, like a certain amount, but they're more. So that's why it doesn't work. The uh, timing belt no longer lines up. There are some timing belt mechanisms kind of like this, but not over a curve. Uh, if you just have a straight timing belt, you can use it kind of like a um, rack and pinion um, to hold tension and stuff. It's uh, kind of a weird mechanism, but yeah. So that's, that's where I went wrong. Can't have it over a radius. 
uh, because that stretches out the teeth per inch. So yeah, ruins everything. The adhesion must be really good. The If it it's at any angle or anything, there may be some pinching. I'm also worried about wear and tear. Is this belt going to mess up if it's consistently um, pulling teeth? Uh, that's another factor I'll have to research. Only the best. <laughs> Nah, this is for prototyping. I feel terrible for using duct tape on an aircraft part, but sometimes you just have to test your rig before you uh, go too deep into the design of everything. For this, I took out the trim wheel because I needed access to this rod. What we need to do is we need to find a way to mount a pulley to this piece right here. So we need to drill this out. But I'm not gonna do that until I'm sure I need to. Uh, it's best practice to not just go chopping things randomly. We'll grease it up, so I have to buy some grease, uh, and then we will be in good shape. This shaft right here is 11.5 millimeters in freedom units. That's 4.350 inches, which is 7 16th of an inch. Merka! Let's look at our pulleys. I can assure you they're not going to be that convenient, so we might have to drill some down. With these timing pulleys, I don't think I'll have much room to be picky. Uh, this dimension right here should be 14. It is 12. 15 millimeter right there. This is 14, that'd give a millimeter. No, this will give us 18 millimeters. So it looks like these might be the best pulleys. There's just no right answer. It's like, which compromises do you want to make? Do you want to make a, like, how many turns it takes to go around it, compromise? Or do you want to take a, um, like how sturdy it is? Right here we have this eight millimeter drill bit to show it's an eight millimeter shaft size. But if we go up to a 10 millimeter, that's my next bit size, it's taking a huge bite. That is gonna be a hard operation to do precisely. I have a drill press so we can make it nice and parallel, but I think the best solution might just be to knock this out. You can see right here, this dimension is 14.3 millimeters, and then, and then this dimension right here is 14.2. This might just work out perfectly so that I can put this onto this part right here, and we'll get it to uh, hop out. I'm going to put my jaw vise right here, like that. That's going to be a little <laughs> tricky to get off. But I think how they got it in there in the first place is they heated it up to put it in. So I'll have to... Just drill it. <laughs> Come on. Down. The heck? What are you doing? Uh, I'll Google it's it. not how the world works. I think I'll have Dummy. to heat it up. Before you get mad at me, let me get mad at myself. This is not a good way to fix the vice to the table. Hand holding it? Not, not great. Uh, we have this thing called a screw. You put a screw down, and you have a nut, and that fixes it to the table. Or literally in the scene right there, there's a clamp. So. All of the problems thicken once you add this panel. So we have to go into this model right here and physically drill out somewhere to mount this motor, or we need to recable it back here. This panel really eliminates a lot of our potential solutions. What I'm going to do is get a stepper like this and put it in here, and then loop that into the timing belt. So it gets routed from here, up here, and back to the motor. I'll have to drill a little hole here and make sure there's clearance for all of the routing. What I'm gonna do here is get a pancake stepper. Pancake steppers are really interesting. They actually got the name pancake stepper because if you run them over torque, they smell like a bed and breakfast. No, it's because they're thin. Uh, the only uh, other thing you have to realize with pancake steppers is instead of using traditional grease to lubricate the stepper, you have to use butter. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop, I'll stop, I swear. <laughs> so a pancake stepper 
It's a lot shorter than your standard stepper motor. It's also a little bit weaker, which actually works in our advantage. We want a very weak motor that can just barely overpower our trim wheel. The potentiometer would go here, the motor would go here, and then you would loop all of these through here, uh, potentially have a third, um, a third wheel to take some of the stress off of the potentiometer, uh, and then it would be routed all the way back here. What I have right here is a 38 millimeter stepper, and what I need is something a little bit shorter. This one's going to be either 23 millimeters or 30 millimeters. We're gonna find out which one works best. Wow, we have almost exactly 30, 30 millimeters from the bottom. I did have to mark out a little area to cut from the motor mount because uh, your boy forgot that the cover has a thickness. Here we have the cable. It goes through here to the wheel itself. This is what drives it to this stepper. This is what powers it when autopilot is engaged. And then it goes through this hole here. I'll file that more be to uh, eliminate any cable wear, any sharp edges or anything. And then it goes back to the wheel. So this is kind of the circuit. What we need to add now is the last step, the potentiometer. And what I have to do with this is I have to drill right here, roughly right here, so that I can drill right here, so that I can mount the potentiometer right here. This potentiometer will then tap into the pulley and that will be what all of the signal for the elevator is from. I thought about a few different ways of doing this. I thought about tapping into the uh, numbers right here itself, but this was not an option because taking it out would require completely disassembling this entire thing, drilling out all of these rivets. I don't have a rivet gun, so I couldn't put them back together with the rivets. It would have to be with screws. Um, which would be uh, quite difficult, if not impossible, uh, because of the angles you have to screw everything in with. So that is the compromise I'm making here. I have explicit permission to be able to drill into holes that aren't seen from the front. So I'm going to drill the hole here so I can drill the hole behind it so that I can mount this five-turn potentiometer. You can see right here we have the top pulley for the motor. And then we have the pulley right here. And it's really key to make sure these align like this. So it's the same through there. There's no uh, bending or warping throughout the cabling. So now we have it going here, here, and then through this idler right here. That'll be in the center over to the edge. I called an idler. It's also a potentiometer. It's dual purpose. I was going to measure this with a caliper. You get a little a compass, put it in the center, draw a circle here, connect the dots just to see how it'll go visually. But I realized that I can just trace it. I, yeah, sometimes you overthink things. We have three options. This one is just a straightaway, not including this potentiometer idler gear. We have this one right here that's parallel to the motor right here. Then we have this one right here that is a tensioned version. All right, goes out of the way. We wanna go in between these two, somewhere around the profile of about, say, here. Uh, and so the center should be about right here. It's very similar to the second one, just a little off. We 
just made a breakthrough. We moved the pulley from there over here. From the tangent point here to the tangent point here is da, 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 20 centimeters. This is the ideal placement. This is a testing placement. So, and it's about 20 centimeters as well here. We only need 14 centimeters of travel. This is why the hole we drilled right here did not work. Uh, it's far cry short of that. In fact, most of the holes anywhere on this side of the Mississippi wouldn't work. Uh, okay, so our test placement here works a lot better. It then gets routed to the number wheel, through the potentiometer, through an idling gear, down here to the motor, to the uh, trim wheel, and back up to the number wheel. I just put all the test pieces in, and for the first time, I'm excited <laughs> about this mechanism. Uh, this has been a big stressor. <laughs> so, you can see here, it's finally tightened up and it's moving. It's not moving well, this is just temporary, but you can see everything is linked together in harmony. I, I don't know if this noise is harmony. It's close. It's at least music. So now all I have to do is straighten everything out, put the potentiometer here, design a fancy mechanism that can be f mounted flush here because this is going to be shoved in the panel, likely screwed down these three screws as well as these two. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's all that needs to be happening.